Well, at the weekend, the Korea Mail newspaper in Brisbane has provided the new state opposition leader, David Christofulli, with the ammunition he needs to drain the LNP swamp. That's the good news. The bad news is it'll require rare political courage. The Korea Mail newspaper over three days did not mess around. It was an astonishing expose of the Liberal National Party in Queensland. You could sum up everything in one word, failure. Because if it were only half true, you couldn't win an election with this lot. There were all sorts of revelations, a lot of which we already knew, detailing the barnyard morality of those at the top of the Liberal National Party in Queensland. In the administrative wing, these bullies preside over a virtual star chamber. A political party should be an ideas factory, not a mirror image of Xi's Communist Chinese Party, where those who dissent and dare to express a difference of opinion are thrown out and told to shut up. Witness former Brisbane LNP councillor Kate Richards. She was thrown out of the party ahead of the 2020 council elections by the bully boys who referred her to the Queensland Crime and Corruption Commission. They claimed she'd wrongfully tried to get around a developer donation ban. The Crime and Corruption Commission cleared Kate Richards of any wrongdoing. She later went on to say she was targeted for rejecting the cronyism and backroom deals and is now suing the LNP state executive for $1 million for defamation. This is just one case I know of many. The LNP administration seemed wedded to the political wilderness. If they fail to clean out such people, half of whom seem to be on the payroll of Clive Palmer. However, the parliamentary team are not at all innocent of blame for the fact that the LNP has been in opposition. Now, get your head around this, Queensland. Remember I talked last week about the Liberal Party, likely to be obliterated in WA, unheard of in Victoria, in government in New South Wales, with a wafer-thin majority of two. South Australia, they formed a minority government. And in Queensland, the coalition in opposition for 27 of the past 31 years. It's hard not to think they enjoy it. Collect the salary, more than they'd ever earn in the commercial world, and most of them couldn't spell the word policy, let alone initiate it. Well, David Christofulli, what's the new leader thinking at the weekend? It's anybody's guess. How does he drain the swamp? He has to understand one thing. He'll never be as powerful in the LNP of Queensland as he is today. He has to demand an administrative clean-out the lot. And the longer he goes without doing it, the more his power is diminished. That's why his biggest test is finding the guts to stand up to those who presided over permanence in opposition. David Christopher Lee joins me. David, thank you for your time. Why not tell all these people on this program tonight, from Mrs Hardy down, the Toowoomba grandmother, who's the president, to go and go now? Alan, we've got a challenge and I'm not going to walk away from it. And everything I do is about getting my mob fit for government. And when you talk about how the party's going to run, um, that's up to a group of people who are sitting behind me. And it's not the big wigs, it's not the faceless men, it's the everyday branch members. And I'm at Pine Rivers. And yesterday I was at Lockyer Valley and tomorrow I'm going to be in Longreach. And if we want generational reform, we've got to get the grassroots to be empowered and to know that we can't accept mediocrity. We can't accept continuing to fight with each other. We've got to know our roles and responsibilities. We've got to get on and deliver people what they want. And that is decent government in Queensland. And you're right, it's not going to be an easy challenge. I, I know what I'm up for, um, but I've got the ticker and I'm going to see it through. OK, now listen, that was all terrific, David. And you do have ability, good presence, you look fantastic and you speak well. The only problem is you didn't answer my question. The story in the Courier Mail was about administrative bullies who control the party. And if, like Kate Richards, you disagree, they'll deal with you. And there are potential voters out there watching you now. And they want to know whether you will actually demand, with all the power you've got, and it's a lot of it because you're brand new, they can't get rid of you, to say, we have to start, you all must go. So let me ask you, why wouldn't you call a special meeting of State Council, the State Executive, and move a motion, you, Chris Fully, to declare all administrative positions vacant and the second motion to accompany it, that no one currently in such a position can stand for re-election and see whether the people you're talking about, out there, you said, in the branches, the rank and file, would support you. That support you overwhelmingly. Because you, because well, you know you as it? well as I do that 
because you know as well as I do that happens once, one opportunity, and it's only in four months' time. And that'll be up to the branch members to decide. I can offer one thing, though, Alan, and that is that people are going to know in me that I am my own man and I have one focus, and that is getting us ready to win government. And when we do, I don't want it to be government for two minutes. I don't want us to win one election and then disappear into oblivion again. And I know it's a mammoth task. And people said the same thing to Wayne Goss when he tried to reform the Labor Party and did in the late 80s. But you they haven't told me anything about tonight. David Cameron you, you, 20 you years ago. David, David, you haven't told me anything tonight that will reform the Liberal National Party in Queensland. You haven't told me a single thing. And you haven't answered any of those concerns. I mean, are you worried that your leadership may be owed to some of these people that the Courier Mail was naming? Alan, I owe my leadership to two groups of people. One is the people who choose me in my home electorate of Broadwater, and the second is the members of my party room. And let me tell you a little something about the internal machinations of the Liberal Party and the Liberal National Party. I joined many years ago. Do you know how many days I've been a member of a faction? Zero. Zip. Zilch. Yeah. I never have been, and I never will be. But the, but and as a, a result, I owe my existence to David, nobody. You've, David, you lost 27 of your 31 matches. If I was coaching a team that lost 27 of its 31 matches, the rugby family would be calling for selectors, administrators and a lot to move on. The Courier Mail story was about bully boys in the administrative wing, whether it was Frecklington or whomever, whether it was the, the, the fellow down there, the dentist from the Gold Coast, Langbrook. All of them were knifed by the administration. Now, those administrators should go. Will you be demanding that they go? That's a yes or no question. Great analogy to use rugby. And I'm now the captain of that side. And I mightn't pick who goes onto that side, but I do pick the way we play. And I will be demanding a few things from my team and from those on the sidelines. And if we do, if we get our house in order, if we stop this internal machinations and cannibalising each other, we're going to get fit for office. And when we do, I intend to deliver generational I government know. for Queensland. But and I don't walk away from hard things, Alan. I mean, Mrs. So, Alan, Mrs. so let, me answer, let me answer this... May I answer this question to you, you like may. this? You, you may. say, will, You say, will I reform the party? My leadership will live or die on this. The future of the Liberal National Party will live or die on it. The prospect of me being able to deliver what I want for my kids and this state a future where people can grow things and mine things, heaven forbid, and do the things that we used to do in Queensland. Everything lives and dies on this. You don't think that I've got a lot riding on it? You betcha I do. But I'm up for it and I'm going to reform it. But and the, in six months' time, in okay. 12 months' time, right and in four years' time, you right. will look back and say, this guy fulfilled what he said he was going okay. to do. That's right the up. only judgment I can be judged on. OK, now listen, I want you to read the Courier Mail story again and to identify and recognise that the problems in the Liberal National Party are primarily right at the top, the administrative wing of the party. From Mrs Hardy down, out there people watching this say she and a lot of them should go. So I want you to do a little bit of homework between now and next Monday night and, unfortunately, I'll ask you some of those questions again and I'm hopeful that you'll have a different answer. You've got to get a hot knife, David, and take it to the lot of them. But thank you for your time tonight. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Here he is. David Christofulli, oh, he's got a tough job. But that's what you do. That's what you do. I mean, there's dead wood at the top. Mrs Hardy, sorry, you might be a wonderful grandmother, but you're not up to running the joint. And you've got to take all this other mob with you. Let's start again. And then there'll be a chance. But at the moment, it's a mess. So is the Parliamentary Party, I might add.